And we are going to be working around the face to start with. Um, and just talking about the scary things that happen when you are cutting around the face. So the biggest thing for me is just making sure that you're in a body position that is going to set you up for success. Now, if you're really busy and you're an hour behind and you're really stressed out, cutting everything around the face with the client staring at you can sometimes be quite intimidating. So uh, in my SR education program, we do have you standing in a position where nothing's going to happen that's bad, right? So I always stand on the opposite side to the side that I'm cutting, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I stand vertically and so that my hands stay vertically uh, as well. And that stops you from getting a heavy step. So if I turn my body horizontally and I cut here, you can see that my fingers are horizontal. What happens is they tend to fall down and get really hard through there and sometimes you get that ledge. So by standing vertically, you do not get that ledge because your hand is more vertical. So when it falls back, it's softer. What I'm going to do is I've taken a diagonal section on my first side and my first side I'm going to be cutting from bottom up. So, classic graduation around the face, you're going to simply decide how much you want. I'm going to comb the hair across over the face. You don't have to, you know, iron her nose and comb her eyes or anything like that. So, just creating that over direction all the way across. Now, that is my side length. So for a client that doesn't want very much, I'm going to drop my side length out and leave more weight in the sides and start cutting just from here. This is going to be for a client that doesn't want very much, but we are noticing a big 90s trend. Uh, we're seeing really short around the face. So I wanted to show you how classic work can still work in that way. So my left elbow is up. I'm going to actually start cutting from that length to cut a bit more out. Keep combing the hair across and simply continue to cut upwards until you get to the length that you want. Now this could end up being a fringe or you can end up just with some beautiful graduation. And can you see when it falls down, it's soft through there? And the reason that it's soft is because I over-directed it so dramatically. So I'm going to go up again from there. Again, just over-directing the hair all the way. I think I'll go a little bit shorter and just show you how you can recomb and continue to keep going up. So my guide is here, and I just keep walking up the section. What you do not want is a big corner on the top. So it's very important that I tilt this way at the top. If my elbow starts to go down, then I start to put that step in there, which is not what I want to do. All right, so we're starting to see this nice shape now. I'm going to continue doing diagonal sections. The depth of this section is dependent on the density around the face. So if someone is very weak and empty around here, then your first section would probably have been a little bit thicker to start with. Now I'm going to over direct everything to the front. You can obviously start to use elevation and continue to take it shorter if you want to. But for me, I just want to show you how you can give an amazing effect just by bringing it all to the first section. Okay, so you can get as strong with your angle as you want to. I'm going to continue all the way through, diagonal sections back. Nothing is really reaching. 
reaching past the occipital bone. So anything below the occipital bone you'll find doesn't really do very much. Now I know that this is messy, I'm not cutting this area. I'm cutting the area that I've already combed. And so I wouldn't cut anything that hadn't been combed properly. As I get higher, then I start to figure out all of that top area. And just constantly lifting that elbow up, making sure I don't get any steps. So this is really good for your clients that like it a little bit pretty and flicky. It's also really, really good for those clients that are blow drying it back a little bit more as well now. Works on any client. If it's on a newer, younger client, it's going to look a little bit more fashion, trend. If it's on any of your other clients, obviously, you can make it fit into their style. Good morning, everyone. If you're just joining us, this is Sally Rogerson. I have a um, advanced education business and it's called SR Hair Society and we're here today in LA. This is our academy area and you can see our beautiful salon in the background as well. They're just starting to get going for the day. So we are based in Koreatown in LA. We have a beautiful 10,000 square foot salon and then we also have an academy, which I'm in now, where I teach my techniques. And also my business partner, Shannon Ra, also teaches here. So we do have a lot of new classes coming up in January. So please, uh, you can just have a look on my Instagram at the classes and where to book and everything, but we have quite a lot of new stuff coming up. My Instagram is at Sally Rogerson. And if you have any questions as well, you can always message me there. So I'm going to continue through into this back area. And I'll continue really until nothing else reaches. So it's very simple, classic technique. Now, when things are classic, what does classic mean? Classic simply means that it does not go out of fashion and it's timeless. So a classic haircut never goes away. You might put it away for a few years or a few seasons and then bring it back out again. But classic haircuts don't mean boring, they just mean they work on everyone. So I'm kind of using my fingers as I dry it just to play around with it. And you can see it's falling really nicely already. Now, that's because I went shorter. But you could have just done the outline as well. I, I went shorter and cut the interior as well. Um, so, here we go. I've gone nearly all the way around to the back now. So I'll finish just with a vertical section through there and then bring this section all the way through to that front area. So we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. We have uh, an editorial team that we take to London. We're also going to be doing New York as well. So if you're interested in getting on an editorial team and doing Fashion Week, that's something we've got coming up in January. Also, just things like um, just regular cutting classes with myself and Shannon. But we are also going to start bringing artists over from Korea as well. So that's going to be a really fun thing. If you're interested in learning all of those amazing perming and technical techniques, Christian Mendoza. I love Sally Rogerson. Well, I love you, so thank you very much. Just a bit slow this morning. I had a little bite on my left hand from my dog, and my hand's still not quite all there. So, bear with me. Uh, now I'm going to go to my other side. 
So I don't do side to side on a client. The reason I don't do side to side is because um, if we think of the concept that short hair pushes long hair, so short hair is going to push that long hair away. I do not like to cut both sides because often people end up with a little square bit in the middle. And when you have that little square bit in the middle, the hair just falls straight down on the face. It does not push away from the face. So what I'm going to do now is do all of the other side. So what do I need as my guideline? All I need is a little sliver to use as my guide. Then I'm going to get rid of all this other hair. And then, can you see on this side, my elbow is not up anymore. Now my elbow is down and I'm cutting from the top down. Now, the key thing here is that you make sure that you find your shortest guide. So I would never take this guide. So I'll get rid of that as well. And I'm looking for my shortest guide. So I'm just trying to get my shortest bit in the middle to use as a reference and as a guideline. And then I will come across to this side and you can see I'm cutting top down now. So it turns out that uh, some um, robots are going into mass production in a couple of years. <coughs> so I'm hoping I'll get a new hand soon for the older hairdressers amongst us. <coughs> I'm hoping for a new bionic arm. Sorry, I've got the cough. centralized. I know that clients like to kind of turn around with you, but you need to keep them in that stationary position at the front. All right, so I'm just going to continue. People always ask me to uh, explain my, my, you know, what my kind of history a little bit more as well. So, um, you know, I started cutting hair in the UK and I started with Vidal Sassou and I was with them for many, many years, worked in the London schools and joined the creative team there. And I was lucky enough to kind of work all over the world. I spent a lot of time in Japan um, training teachers and uh, stylists there. And now I'm here in LA. I've had my own business for about 12 years now. I left Sassoon um, about 12 years ago as the senior creative director for the academy in Santa Monica, which is no longer there. And um, yeah, it's just 
very interesting, I'd say, when you have a, a long career. You kind of go a bit up and down and in and out with hair, but still just love cutting hair. Still gives me that excitement, still gives me that thrill. Okay, so you can start to see my second side coming through. Okay, so here I can start to use my fingers, I can start to play around with it, I can start to decide how much I want. Now remember, there's no freehand in here, there's no, you know, there's nothing um, personalization in there, it's just the raw haircut at this stage. So what am I going to do now? I'm simply going to connect it through. Just taking my vertical sections through the top, one section from each side, lift this hair up. Now it's so important that I let this hair drop out at the front. If I start cutting from here, then I'm going to create really big holes in there. So all I'm going to do now is just gently connect the back area, uh, the top area into the back. I'm not really doing very much in the back. This is the client that wants to have their hair very simple and easy. So all we're going to do here is just bring everything up to this middle area. So it's not very much to cut. It's really just more of a connection than anything else. Just to see if there's anything that wants to connect in. Now, nothing below the parietal ridge really should um, reach anything. So it's usually just a couple of sections, really. I already cut the outline as well. So. All right, nearly there. From a blow dry point of view, um, obviously you can dry it in any way you want to. You can 100% put a lot of style and curl into it, but I definitely like it a little bit more natural. I will give a finish and a bounce for sure with probably like a wise part brown brush just to give a finish on the hair. How's she looking? Okay guys, so I'm just going to do a really quick dry off and show you my finishing technique through the front. I think we'll use a little bit of this. Just a bit of royal blowout. Obey. I don't work for any product company, so I'm not trying to sell you anything. So just working with um, YS Park brush. I really like this on editorial as well because it has the bristles, the ball bristles, and then obviously the two different bristles. And I really use my round brush a lot like um, a flat brush, like I'm wrap drying to start with. And then for this technique, I'm just going to dry it all the way forward. And you could dry it with a big round brush as well. We're seeing a lot of very kind of um, 60s Bridget Bardot kind of vibe as well at the moment.
just about sealing the cuticle. And then when you do blow dry it forward, when you brush it back, you'll get that really nice, slightly kind of flicked vibe. Just trying to seal that cuticle. It's not always about just blow drying and blow drying. It's about just sealing that cuticle, making sure that your dryer is following your brush, getting a nice finish. Christian was asking, what's the name of the blow dryer? This is actually from uh, our house. So it's, it was given to me as a, as a gift from a company called Our House, R-H-A-U-S. And um, if you message me, I can send you their info, but it's really good, I love it so much. shaping it's really just a case of you know how much finishing you want to do what do you want it to look like and this is when you start to really work with your clients you know you want to ask the client how's it feeling where do you want it to fall on your face do you want to be able to put it behind your ear all of that good stuff so I'll go back through. Now I can come through and I can start to work very gently with some slicing through that way. I can also work with some pointing. Um, I shouldn't have to do too much though. It's more a case of because I want to. So if you wanted this to be more PC and see-through, then you can definitely slice a bit more 
uh, directional slicing. Just keep it very pretty and light. So I can slice a little bit this way, just with the direction that I want the hair to fall in. That works very well. I can also lift the hair up and just start to point it a little bit. What I do not want to do is I do not want to make it horizontal again through the center. So very important to try and keep your V intact. I'm going quite deep with my pointing just to make it a little softer. This is suitable if you have clients with thicker hair, but if you have a client with finer hair, I would really try and concentrate on more precision cutting for that client. You'll find that they, um, <clears throat> their haircut will last longer, it will feel thicker. You can still do some, obviously, but just don't. Like for me, razor cutting, I would never razor cut someone with super fine hair, personally. Um, so, you know. Whatever works for your clientele. Depends on what salon you're working in, if you're working with clients with mega amounts of hair or not. So I know I usually do some wild, wacky madness, but I just thought I'd show you some pretty hair as well. Because I know you all want those big tips, because it's Christmas. So, this is the kind of stuff that gets you some good tips. All right, so there we go. That's gonna be my little class on working around the face today. So, what I did was, very simply, took diagonal sections I started, I'm right-handed, I started on the right side. I took diagonal sections, I brought everything across, I chose to start cutting higher because I knew I wanted to go into like a short, fringy kind of vibe. Um, I over-directed everything to it, and then went back and cut everything on the other side. And you know, it works every time, especially if you're really tired in the Christmas rush and you want something that you know is going to work and feel confident with, then there you go. 